Hello everyone. Give you a current status on the uh, CRP4848 build. Um, I now have all the axes uh, moving. Uh, have all the uh, lines run to the steppers. And again the plug system worked pretty good. I tied the Z off right there. The uh, Y axis I just brought up out of the E chain and attached it there. The X axis sides I actually use some of this bracketing material and I tap these holes here and I've got some zip ties inside and outside the way I can secure it to the uh, X axis motor the uh, other side I have just tied into a line that come up and again I use one of these brackets here to bring the line through from the other side kind of just attach it there and then the, the Y axis and the Z axis come out from the E chain and I just put some conduit cover on it worked out pretty good uh, went from a smaller conduit to a larger conduit so all four lines go down through the E chain and then uh, basically over here on the side I'll try and get a shot here now this isn't how I'm going to finish these uh, uh, access connections to the uh, uh, stepper drivers, but I uh, wanted to get things up and running and make sure everything was working good. But uh, as you can see, with the, everything mounted to the board, I, I mounted it to the inside of the table, so uh, basically everything's kind of flush to the side of the machine here, uh, which I'll eventually put a cover on if I get to it before I uh, move into a bigger space and build a different uh, base for it. Uh, and of course, down here. What I did is I just brought a power line in from the side so I can unplug everything. And then I have a switch here and that turns the uh, driver assembly on for the steppers. And then I started working on the wiring for the spindle. Uh, what I did was I moved over, moved my uh, verbal frequency drive over out of the way. Um, and then I ran the line in. And this is, was a kind of a quick fix here. I just used a two outlet box because I'm running 220 and then I uh, ran the lines over to the side of the machine and then I have a switch here in front so that I can turn the uh, VFD on uh, keep all the high power away from the other side of the machine and then of course I just have some uh, put some end connectors on it like plugs and just plug it in that way I can disconnect everything and move it if I have to so, so far everything's working pretty good. Um, I'll do a quick little demonstration. Um, wrote myself a little warm-up cycle. And uh, we'll go ahead and get it started. And you can uh, watch the machine run. And there you go. Now, I only have this set to a, a maximum of 800 inches per minute. It will run a little faster. Um, the motors don't particularly like it. These particular motors um, are built more for the low end power. They're 1600 ounce inch. Um, and they don't like a lot of RPM. And that's the trade off that I decided because I wanted that lower end power because I plan on uh, doing a lot of metal cutting also including uh, steels, stainless steels and so forth. So I wanted to be able to uh, have lots of power at the low end. So 
even for woodworking 800 inches a minute for rapids it's more than satisfactory to me so that's current status I'm gonna finish running the uh, wiring and the tubing up to the spindle and uh, get show you what I'm gonna do for uh, coolant supply at that point uh, when I get to that point I'll do another video thanks for watching